What's up guys, Vulcan here, and today we're going over how to crank up your damage. Now when it comes to Outriders Endgame, speed is the only metric that matters, but DPS is how you can push that metric. So if you want to progress, you're going to need to supercharge your damage. And there are a few things that we can tweak to get the most out of your build outside of using overpowered skills like anomaly rounds. So let's go ahead and let's get straight to it. Now we're going to start things off with a few basic things to help boost that damage that you might not know about. So one, spend time at the crafting table. It's very easy to jump into crafting, swap a mod, and then leave to keep grinding expeditions. That's great, right? But you're missing out on so much extra damage. Using shards to boost your attributes that affect your build. If you use anomaly rounds, then shoot for items that have firepower for technomancer and pyromancer, and then a combination of anomaly power and firepower for trickster. So you want to make sure you get gear with high rolls on those stats, then hit the crafting table to max those attributes. And another thing to keep checking is your weapon level. Spend some titanium and drop pods to help level up your gear so that you're always pushing out as much damage as you possibly can. Number two, get a tactical assault rifle. These are the most overpowered weapons in the game right now, even with the recent nerf they received. And the nice thing is that these are insanely easy to find. Any assault rifle can be configured to being tactical using weapon variants. I mean, take a look at the difference in damage. You're going from a measly 1k DPS in this example to over 3k plus boosting your crit multiplier just by changing it to tactical. Now this does change it from a fully automatic to a burst style weapon. So if you're not a huge fan of burst, just understand going into it, that's what you're changing this to. And the cool thing is this doesn't just affect those using overpowered bullet skills. That raw damage is available to everyone and you should be using it as much as you can before it gets nerfed even further. Number three, take advantage of crowd control and vulnerability debuffs. So when it comes to easily boosting damage, there are tons of ways to increase your DPS done to enemies that are locked in crowd control, like Freeze and Ash. So make sure to check your skill trees for nodes like this one that increase all damage done to frozen targets. And another debuff that you want to make sure you're taking advantage of is vulnerability. This increases all damage taken by enemies, and it recently received a debuff, but honestly, it's still a super easy way to generate some extra DPS and it didn't really set it back too much. So keep your eyes open for different ways to apply vulnerability. So number four, we're going to go into some easy to find mods that are going to supercharge your damage, not just like the legendary tier three ones that you have to go find that are super specific. For the most part, these are ones that you could go out and grind easily today. So number one, Killing Spree. This is a tier three mod, and this one will increase your damage by 25% for every kill stacking up to three times, and it lasts for 20 seconds. This is extremely easy to proc, and you can keep it up for a 75% damage increase most of the time. Number two, Bloodlust. Now this is a good alternative or to combo with Killing Spree. Now this is the tier two version of it, and it gives a slightly less amount of damage, but it still holds its own compared to other damage mods. Again, very easy to keep up. Kill will increase your total damage done. Number three is Captain Hunter, and this is just a flat increase to all damage done to elites by 25%. Nothing fancy, just big damage. So try to get this one and equip it onto your gear. Number four, we got Standing Tall. This is the tier two mod. Now this mod rewards players who don't use cover, and honestly, this should be most of you unless you're playing a very specific build. But this one's going to give a flat bonus to firepower and anomaly power when you're out of cover for more than five seconds. In other words, super easy mod to keep up. Up. It's going to give you a nice boost. It should never come off your buff bar. Number five, we have Perpetuum Mobile. Now, this is a mod that doesn't affect like, direct damage, but it allows players to never reload. I mean, just think about that. You never have to reload. You can just have a full-on bullet hose that just keeps pumping out damage. This is easily an S tier mod right now. Make sure to slot this one. I can see a nerf coming in the future, but for now, get out there and enjoy it. Number six, we have Crit Stack. This is a tier two mod that grants players an increase to anomaly power and firepower whenever they deal a critical shot. And this can stack up to five times for some pretty big bonuses and damage, especially if you couple it with your killing spree, your bloodlust, things like that. Number seven, we have Sharp Eye. Now this is a tier three mod. This one boosts firepower whenever you kill an enemy while aiming down the sights. Now this is primarily how you're gonna be using your weapon, right? I don't know too many players that are running in there hip firing, trying to hit things. So this is a very easy, massive firepower boost. It's a no brainer. It's gonna increase your damage. Make sure to keep your eye out for this one. And then lastly, we have a bunch of plus damage to ailment mods. Now this is one I wanna call out because there are some really good 
good mods out there that increase damage to ailments. So as an example, a Pyromancer, right, who deals burns all of the time, they have a ton of mods that play off enemies who are burnt or when you inflict an enemy with a burn. You can synergize these combined with the other mods mentioned, and this is going to be a secret sauce to boosting your damage like crazy. I know Devastators running Anomaly build, Bleed Heavy builds, there are a ton of mods out there that increase damage done or proc and give you some sort of bonus based off of enemies who are bleeding. So ton out there, do not sleep on those. Don't just kind of block all those out and look for only firepower or anomaly power. There are a lot of others that really deserve some attention. Now, number five, make sure to equip your highest item level of gear. So your average item level directly affects your health and your anomaly power for your character. So if you're holding off on moving to a higher item level because of your build, you're actually just gimping yourself on improving baseline stats. If you hover over the average item level on your character sheet, you can see that this is one of the best ways to improve your character on all levels. Now, on the flip side to this, there was a recent Reddit post where a People Can Fly dev Powell came out and talked about the downside scaling issue. So as you raise your average item level, you're going to do better in expeditions where the average item level requirement is higher. However, if you go back into the story mode and you play on world tier 15, you'll actually be downscaled to level 44. So you will feel weaker. Now there is a bug right now where if you swap your sidearm to a lower level sidearm, let's say you have a level 50 sidearm and you put on a level 42 sidearm to lower your total average item level, you'll actually end up putting out more damage, which is weird. They understand that this is a bug. This is something they will be tackling after they get done with the whole inventory wipe, stability, all of that stuff. So it's high up on the list, but definitely not top of the list. So as you raise your average item level and you go back and you play the story or do your hunts, you'll seem like you are a little bit weaker, but don't change anything, leave everything as is because you'll still do extremely well in expeditions. I want to get that out there because I know people are going to have questions and concerns about it. Okay, so with that explained and out of the way, let's move into our last topic and that's an easy one, critical spots. Now this sounds very basic, but it is insane how many players don't spend time aiming for critical spots. They just keep pumping damage into enemies. A Broodmother is a great example. Now, Outriders has two types of damage. You have white damage, which is normal damage, and then you have critical hits, which is damage dealt to a weak spot, and it deals additional damage in this yellow, which are called critical hits, weak spot hits, however you kind of want to talk about it. So when you're trying to progress through end game, you need to understand how to dispatch enemies quickly. And the best way to do that is by knowing where enemies are weak. For humanoid enemies, they're headshots. For Perforo, Broodmothers, things like that, aim for the upper chest, lower chin area. That'll be where you're going to score those critical hits. Now they do cover those areas pretty well, so you're not going to get one every single time, but keep pumping bullets into that zone and you'll start seeing those yellow numbers. Now there is one thing that's kind of out of the ordinary here, and those are the crawl those you do want to hit with headshots that's the, where you can kind of get their critical hits but this is incredibly important and it's insane how many players really don't do that they're just trying to get rid of everything so they're just shooting wildly in the packs of enemies and when you get into ct15 eye of the storm you're running things solo stack some mods that increase damage to your critical chance your critical damage and you'll be able to dispatch those enemies super quick all right, guys, so that wraps up this one, but following these easy steps and getting even a few of those mods are going to help boost your damage immensely in expeditions and later world tiers. So next up, we're gonna talk about some class specific mod lists so you can push your favorite Outrider to the limit. So as always, guys, thank you so much for the support. This has been Vulcan and I'll talk to you guys next time.